Little Hills is our next presenter, and he's going to talk to you about the one thing that has the greatest impact on your health. Sleep. Lots of myths and misunderstandings, you know, get your eight hours, see you tomorrow. One of the major health pillars, very much the third or fourth health pillar. They're a little bit hesitant to make changes. There's so many things that are happening in our lives right now that are beyond our control. One of the leading contributing causes of death and disability in industrialized countries is high blood pressure and its consequences heart attacks and strokes. If I have anything, I try three days of fasting. And if it doesn't get better, I consider a treatment. Practical demonstration of uh, what I want to share with you today, which is breath work. Probably around, I would estimate me to be around 16 years old. And my mother had psoriasis, just a small amount on her elbows. Helps with inflammation. It helps with so many medical, there's so many medical benefits associated with cold exposure. We're going to begin with the first element, which is water. Today we're going to talk about memory. It's a very hot topic, and I am very passionate about helping people improve their memory and age healthfully, cognitively, physically, and socially. Our next speaker, uh, I'm going to be interviewing her, is Shireen Yusuf. She refers to herself as someone who loves experiencing all that her body her, and her mind has to offer. She grew up in Amman, where she played tennis competitively as a child and later on graduated with an engineering degree from, from a university in, in India. She's been competitive She's been a competitive explorer all of her life. She is a woman after my own heart. She currently resides in Houston, Texas, and works with clients from all over the world. She integrates teachings from both the East and the West. Shireen is excited to work with people who want to use breath and ice as a tool to enhance performance and are looking to increase mindfulness. She's a certified instructor in both the Wim Hof Method and I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this properly, the Buteco method. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Welcome, Shireen. Thank you. That's quite the bio data there. <laughs> well, and that's not even covering all the incredible things that you've done. Like I said, you are a woman after my own heart. And I'm not surprised we, we match. We're, we're both uh, got some orange going on. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> awesome. All right. So. There's so much I would want everyone to find out about you, but unfortunately, we ha- we do have limited time, so we're going to narrow it down to cold training. Mm-hmm. And so let's start with how did you come across cold training and decide this is something I want to do? So actually, it was I was climbing mountains at the time. So I used to be a mountain climber. I shouldn't say I used to be. I still do, but not like I used to. And um, very passionate about, you know, ascending. So the higher you go, the colder it gets, right? And so I've always hated the cold, like despised the cold to the point that I used to tell people that it was a genetic problem I had, right? Because I I was born and raised in the Middle East. And I just kind of basically told everybody that, you know, that's that's why I can't uh, bear the cold. And I got to a point where it just hurt too much. You know, my fingers hurt, my my feet hurt, my, you know, I was just so tired of having to put all these these warm packs on my hands and my feet and I'd put two or three pairs of socks and it's nothing made a difference, you know. I mean, it was just annoying me. And I, I think I got to the point where I hated the fact that I hated something so much because <laughs> I realized like when you despise something, it requires a lot of energy to despise it too. Like I think people don't realize like loving something and despising something. Like there is a world of a difference in how you feel and how it just kind of drags you down when you hate something, right? And so during that time, you know, when I kind of made that decision that, hey, I'm done hating this, exactly at that time, they were like, it came up for me like three times, right? Like people just kind of went like, hey, have you heard of Wim Hof? You know, have you looked into Wim Hof? And so 
he was definitely the first person who I saw not just like bearing the cold. He was like going into the cold and like loving it and just spending hours in it. And I do know that there are many like people who do that. You know, there's a lot of stuff in Tibet. There's a lot of things that, around the world from a spiritual standpoint. But this was just a guy, you know, just a random guy. Like, I'm just going to do crazy things with the cold, you know, and um, it really surprised me, you know, for one, just the fact that he found pleasure in the cold, because that's not anything any of us can. I think like it's it's one of those things in your life where somebody opens your mind to it. And Wim did that for me, right? Wim kind of made me realize this is an area of my life that I've just pushed away and I didn't want to have anything to do with. And he kind of like made me see, no, actually, you can not only open up to this area, but you can actually use it to leverage who you are, right? That was my... Yeah. It was, that's, that's incredible. And I'm, I'm still, and I completely relate to the, the brain drag of hating something because I do still have a brain drag around the cold and I'm, I'm working myself through it. And I'm hoping you're going to help me even more so get through it. And as people are, are listening and watching, um, I know they can, hopefully they can relate to that. And you, you kind of do have to get to the point. I, uh, I don't want to put words in, in your mouth, but do you think one of the first step is realizing I don't want to be in this state anymore. I, I don't want quite honestly anything in my environment to impact my inner as much, which means I need to be okay with any environment conditions. Yeah. I don't, I would say most people come into the cold because they have a need, right? It's very rare that you meet people who have come in with that attitude, right? That's mm. kind of the ideal situation, right? Like you want people to recognize there's something in the cold for me, right? But like most people come into it from a need standpoint, um, if they have issues with their joints, you know, so it helps with rheumatoid arthritis, like it has helps with inflammation. It helps with so many medical, there's so many medical benefits associated with cold exposure that most people come to cold kind of like when they don't have any other options in their life, right? They're just kind of like, oh, fine, I'll do this, you know? So that's usually the attitude. Um, with me, it was similar, right? Like I was in a situation where I needed to figure out how to combat my hatred. And so it was still a need, but it was, it was not, you know, one day I wake up and I'm just like, you know, I think the cold's going to be good for me. Like, like, no, I've, I've <laughs> I'm yet to meet people, you know, and then, and then of course there's the challenge factor, right? So like a lot of people kind of look at the ice bath or cold exposure or like, you know, like one of the things that we do in Poland is we take a week and, you know, one of the one of the days during that week is we essentially climb a mountain completely in like bikinis or, or swimsuits, you know, and um, we don't have any of the shelter sheltering that we usually do when we go in, you know, just negative, uh, d negative uh, Fahrenheit temperature. And so it's just that I shouldn't say Fahrenheit, negative Celsius temperature. Yeah, I was kind of thinking. But yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, when you kind of reach that point where you're beginning to recognize, wow, what is my body truly capable of, right? And then you kind of go into like, what is my body and my mind truly capable of? And then you kind of go into this holistic of like, who am I? <laughs> like, who am I? And like, what am I capable of, right? So it's like this... This very, um, it's a very beautiful path to watch, like as a, as a teacher, as an instructor, as a coach, like I think it's so beautiful for me to watch people because people come into the cold at various stages in their life. Some of them come in from a space of need, like I said, some come in from a space of performance enhancement because as an athlete, almost all athletes have put themselves into the cold at some point to recover from whatever they were doing. And like I said, when you start the journey, most people start it. Yeah. Know, so doing. let's, let's go a little bit. So, um, because again, for me, I would be coming, we're so similar. I'd be coming from the same space as you, but I also understand there are tremendous benefits. So let's get a little bit more into the benefits. So people are right. watching like, okay, well, what's in it for me, right? We always have to answer that for people. So what is in it for them to so start? with cold training um, or cold exposure training? 
Yeah. So, I mean, let's start with the outside first, right? So it's good for your hair. It's good for your face. It's good for anything to do with wrinkles. Um, it takes away wrinkles from your skin, helps you with dry skin. So if you have any issues with your skin, you won't have it anymore, believe it or not. Uh, for women, it helps with n- not letting your boobs sag. So it's great. <laughs> Great, positive, like most women are like, oh my God, I wish I had known that. And it's the same thing for men too. So helps with fertility for men, right? And so like, I always joke about it. Bim had a child at 59. He was trying to make a point there, right? So is this one of those things where it really helps uh, a lot of our uh, bodily functions, right? So, and then, and then you take it to a next level where you uh, sleep better at night. Okay, so a lot of people think that, oh, taking a warm shower helps with sleep. Actually, if you take a nice six to seven minute shower at night, you will sleep like a baby, right? So um, recognizing that it also helps with calming you down. So the easiest way to get happy, I promise you, if you have any problem going on in your life, step into a cold shower, stay in the cold shower for about a couple of minutes and then come out. And I'm telling you, there's no way that you're going to be sad. And the reason is because whenever you go into the cold, you are having a release of norepinephrine in your blood, which immediately gets you into a zone of happy, happy, healthy and strong, right? Like you're just in that zone of of feeling happier. And I mean, it's easy for me to say these things like I want people to try it, right? Like actually go into it, go into the shower, have that zone. And like, even if you don't have much time, just let it fall on the nape of your neck because um, that's immediate activation of your vagus nerve and your vagus nerve is important for your complete balance of your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system right so it's responsible for your parasympathetic we are mostly in our sympathetic okay let me step uh, one step back what is sympathetic and what is parasympathetic so sympathetic is your fight or flight parasympathetic is your rest or digest and so most of us are always in that um go 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 mode right it could be because we're you know, late for a meeting. It could be because we had a fight with someone. It could be because we're having um, just, you know, we need to get ready for something that has to happen the next minute. Whenever you're in this state of either living in the future or in the past, you're not in the moment. And when you're not in the moment, you tend to activate your fight flight, right? Which shouldn't be the case because the reality is that your stress calibration in your brain should understand when is it really important for you to have to activate that? And we want to activate that, right? Because only if you have a very healthy sympathetic and you have a very healthy parasympathetic, it, it goes hand in hand. So when you go into the ice or when you go into the cold, guess what's getting activated? The sympathetic. It gets activated, but it's almost like recalibrating your stress gauge within your brain such that when something stupid shouldn't say stupid, but something as simple as sitting in traffic won't bother you because your brain's already recognized that it has to be an event like an ice bath or a cold shower. The way I felt is where I have to like go to that extent in order for me to get activated. So it's this incredible recalibration of your stress gauge, which then leads to emotional management, right? Because it's, it's so closely tied when you are stressed you act in a certain way. If you can manage your stress, that in itself is amazing. So starting from there, it helps with management of stress, but then management of stress also leads to emotional management too. So, I mean, these are like, I can keep going. There's so many, so many things. <laughs> well, I, I mean, even, even if you look at it from a standpoint of inflammation, right? Like inflammation is probably the root cause of most disorders and diseases that we have in our life. And so it, it helps with, inflammation reduction, all of the, um, you know, I said rheumatoid arthritis, like joint issues, all of that stuff. Uh, I love it. And I love how you explain how it rack and stacks on itself. So how much exposure is required to start getting these benefits? Okay, excellent. And I I also want to add one more, uh, which is very important is it's really, really important for the priming of your circulatory system as well. Right. Because your blood cells are, you know, I always explain it this way. Like if you want to develop your bicep, do you just do this all the time or do you do full range of motion? Right. And so your blood cells need to go through vasoconstriction and vasodilation 
vasoconstriction constriction and vasodilation, wrong symbol. Um, and so like when you're doing that, you're getting full range of motion, right? So when you get full range of motion from your cells, you are then at a place where your cells are getting more, you know, there's more tenacity in your cells. Your cells are getting stronger, right? So a lot of people go into the ice or go into the cold and they immediately say, oh, it hurts, it hurts. And I always say, if it hurts, you probably need it more because your circulation circulation isn't great, right? Because your blood's flowing from extremities into your core and then going back. And so like that in itself is like an exercise of its own, right? So when you're in the ice and then you get out of the ice, the beauty of the Wim Hof method is you're still working on your basal metabolic rate even after you exit the ice. So what we're doing is we're trying to get back our body temperature to what we want it to be to be comfortable by doing the horse stance. So we're not immediately getting out of the ice and we're just putting clothes on. No, there is a phase after the ice as well that really helps with your basal metabolic rate. So that's why people have diabetes, all of like blood pressure issues, like all of these things. It really, really helps with doing that entire process of, you know, going into the ice, staying in the ice, helping that switch from parasympathetic uh, to parasympathetic, going through that phase, coming out, doing the hard stands, letting the burn coming from within, all of it is important in that process. So to answer your question, usually it takes 90 seconds to go from your fight or flight to your rest or digest. And so we always say, do it for a minimum of two minutes, minimum, because you want, you want to get over that <gasps> feeling, right? You want to get over that. And so um, it's important to like, at least do it for two minutes. And then after that, listen to your body. Like you never, the cold is so powerful and it's incredible that we can use it as a, like a power source, right? But with every powerful thing, we have to respect it. We have to respect it and we have to have a certain humility towards it. And like the recognition that there is a basal fear, right? So like you're going into it with that recognition that what am I going to learn from you today? I'm going to completely surrender myself and you tell me what I need today, right? So like some days it might just be, I'm so wired. I just need to calm down. Some days it might be, oh my gosh, my body is really tight I need to relax and like some days it might just be wow I've got an issue I, I fell down and I have a huge swelling in my leg and so you don't have to go too long but at the same time you can have any like temperatures of like 55 degrees Fahrenheit 64 degrees Fahrenheit and below is great the colder you get the more you're activating your nervous system the less colder you are you can spend a little more time but you're also working on your inflammation. So there's this constant like, what are you really looking for when you go into the ice? If you're just doing it as a practice, you know, anything under like 60, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, anything under that, at least two minutes should kind of give you your practice. And you can do it once a week, once or twice a week is more than enough. Your effects, oh, wow. uh, yeah, your effects for one ice bath last you uh, about a week. So um, and then daily maintenance is awesome, right? So like cold showers are the way to go to kind of keep up the daily maintenance. And I'm telling people like, don't think that you can never have a hot shower again. Like you can't go into the heat. You're missing the point, right? Like you want to enjoy everything. What I'm asking you is to change your relationship with the ice, with the cold. There is this element of like, I hate the cold. I don't like the cold. I don't want to be with the cold. And that is what I'm wanting you to change, not hit the heat, just change your relationship with the cold. So if you're going to take a hot shower every day, make it every other day, do a cold shower instead every other day or start with hot and change to cold. Like have that have that discipline to recognize that you don't only want to go hot, 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 hot all the time. And yeah, I mean, enjoy the heat, but enjoy the cold as well. Oh, yeah, that's such a thorough and excellent explanation. And it's good to know that, you know, you don't need to step on an ice bath every day, just getting in the routine of once a week, you do the ice bath, and then you maintain with the cold shower, and you get into shifting. So let's get into the shifting of the mindset. Because like you mentioned, if you're going to go train with Wim Hof or a member of esteem, you're you're building up to another level. So it, it, it becomes beyond, okay, I'm using the cold to rebalance my, uh, my nervous system. 
now I'm, I'm going to do a mine over the cold to keep my body temperature. So let's, yeah. let's start digging a little bit into that. Yeah. So that, you know, when you start going into those levels, there's a bit of training involved, right? So like, for example, you know, some of the records that Wim had, you know, he climbed Mount Everest with, you know, open toe shoes and like bare chest, you know, and I would never tell to somebody who's just starting the Wim Hof method to do that. Right. So like the recognition, this is where, you know, these practices, what they're doing is helping you build self-awareness. You have to know yourself. You know, you have to get to a place where you say, I know who I am. I know what I can take. I know, um, you know, this is too much. I know that this is needs more training. And so most people gain that kind of knowledge of what, what they're capable of when they're able to get mind-body alignment, right? Because most people, their mind wants them to do something, but their body can't keep up or their body wants to do something and their mind doesn't want to go there, right? And so like, that's a big problem because that it's like having two children constantly fighting against each other. You're not getting any work done because you're just fighting with each other all the time, right? You want to be in a situation where your children are working for you, right? Not against you. And so like when the mind and the body are in unison, that's when like I consider it like that's when you're going into superhuman or you're able to completely utilize your entire human potential, right? Because as humans, we are so capable of so much. Most of us are probably not even living up to like 30 to 40% of what we're truly capable of, right? And when you start getting that mind-body alignment, that's the first thing. I call it sandbagging. Sandbagging is when you're essentially really, really falling short of what you're truly capable of, right? So like Mm -hmm. that just kind of goes away, you know? And so like just doing an activity, like going into the cold has already made you do something that you wouldn't usually do. It isn't something that, you know, you'd get up in the morning and you'd be like, oh, you know, why don't we take a cold shower today, right? Like you have to get to a certain level where that then becomes what you want to do. It's you're driven by it, but you're not addicted to it because once you kind of go into that addiction zone, you're missing the point again, right? So like you always have to be in that growth zone where you're constantly doing stuff to almost like it's NLP. You're re re repatterning your brain every time you make that choice of going cold, every time you make that conscious decision, I am going to make a decision for me that is going to make me happier, healthier, and stronger. Every time you make that decision, what you're doing is you're practicing the ability to make that decision in every other area in your life, whether it's your relationships, whether it's the people you want to spend time with, whether it's the job you're doing, like it starts small. Always you start with one decision that you're making that's uncomfortable, but you're doing it because you know, it's going to bring you happiness, health and strength. And that's where it helps to know the science, right? It helps to know why, like all the stuff that I was just sharing. A lot of people just don't know that, yeah, oh my God, those sleep, you know, it helps with my sleep. It helps with my circula- circulation system. It helps with my heart. It helps with the beating of my heart, you know? But it's, it, it, it's so powerful how you're describing things, but it ties back to, you have to understand how your body functions. So you're describing a lot of things and it shouldn't just be knowledge that you have because you happen to teach that and it's your passion, your interest. Everyone should have the curiosity of, how is it all connected? Why, you know, and this is why we're digging into it, but you know, in 30 minutes, you can only, you can still just touch the surface, Correct. right? So you should understand your blood flow. What is it? What What is this, you know, constriction and restrict, like, what is this all about? And then, you know, what hormones, because cortisol can be released and is released if, if you know, under cold, yeah. but so is human uh, growth hormone, right? So it's just like, what is my body going to release? How am I going to react to these things that are being released? And how does it all play out? Because if you're just trying it and you're, yeah, you're going to get the benefits, but you're not under understanding, then you're not getting to the level of what Shireen is saying to where now you're really in touch with your body, you're in touch with your mind, you're connecting the two together, and you can push to what others are going to consider the extreme because you're... Yeah, it becomes, it becomes normal. It becomes your yeah. new normal, right? And like going back to whenever you go into the cold, it's the four, I call it the dose of happiness, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, Right. You're getting all four. And so happiness really comes from a place of, yes, agreed. 
You need to have relationships, oxytocin. You need to have that feeling of achievement, dopamine, you know, serotonin, imp- responsible for your sleep, endorphins, the runner's high. Every time you go into the cold, you're getting a dose of happiness. It's almost like your brain gets wired to knowing what happiness even feels like over and over and over. And so it's so easy, no matter where you're at, to just switch to that mode because you've been in that mode daily, if not weekly, right? So it's... um. It's it's powerful. It is powerful. super powerful, and we're we should <laughs> have should have made this session a lot longer. So <laughs> we, we we are just about running out of time. So before we do, I want to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you, especially if they're in Texas, because you have some some sessions coming up, and I'm totally going to work on getting you out here in November for the live event. So yes, yeah, so we can do some, some sessions and I want, I want to do some of this training with you. So what's the best way of getting in touch with you and finding out what's going on? So my Instagram is my studio's name, Suda Prem Studios. I guess you'll share it. Uh, yes. It's, yeah. So, yeah. It's, that's my, my Instagram. I'm on Facebook at breath conductor. That's my page. Um, I'm definitely, more active on Instagram. And my website is suda-prem.com. So it's S-U-D-A dash P-R-E-M dot com. Suda Prem means pure love. That's what Wim called me. And so I just named everything after what he called me. So um, yeah, I called it pure love because seriously, when you do the Wim Hof method or when you get into the ice, you can't not experience love. Like it just comes up in your heart, you know, and it's like you feel this union, this connection. And so I felt like the name was very apt for. for Oh, I love it. So I will, I'll be truthful and honest. So I'm not, I need to increase my cold training. (laughs) So (laughs) I am walking away with knowledge and I will send you a picture. I I will have, I I almost live in my, in this place for two years. So I need to do the ice bath. How, like, uh, I don't have a thermometer. So I, regular bath, how many bag of ice am I throwing in there with some cold water? Like, I mean, honestly, if you're doing, if you're starting out, you know, and if it's like a colder area of the, of the country, you probably just need to turn it to the cold. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, we're, it's 90 degrees today. We, um, we, we are so, past that. I have been doing the showers, but I think I need to get to the ice bath, the showers. Yeah. Like I, I want to push. Yeah, like I'm, like I'm 60, ready. 80, 60, 80 pounds of ice depending on the room temperature of the, depending on the temperature of the water that's coming out, um, just put it in your bathtub or you can actually get these little cute little bathtubs uh, in amazon.com. Like they're little blue vertical cylindrical looking things, or you can get like a trove, a trough, I think it's called a horse's trough uh, at TSE, like tractor co-supply TCS. Yeah. So um, there's a bunch of, and like I said, if you follow me, I'm on YouTube as well. Sudoprim studio. I have like breath recordings and a bunch of stuff on my ice exposure and everything. So yeah, just get in touch with me if you ever have any questions about any of this stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, people. Make sure that you look up Shireen on Instagram, start following her and get into get into your habit, a routine of adding this, and especially starting with the cold showers, right? So mm-hmm. what, what for me, and, and it is, it's a, okay, turn, turn the dial to cold. And at first it's painful, but it, it does, really? it does have the effect that, uh, we, you know, we talked about and then the tremendous benefits after that. So thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> and, um, we'll be, we'll be staying in touch for sure. I went by so fast. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Alrighty then.